because Abraham has made, has lived his life properly and has kept the contract with God, there's every evidence in the story that no matter what the vicissitudes of Abraham's life, you know, how the great serpent that he sits on in some sense weaves back and forth, there's always the promise that things will work out positively. And, you know, you could read that as naive optimism, but I think it has a, a lot more to do with the actual power of keeping the contractual agreement because I really do believe, and, and I, I've spent a tremendous amount of time thinking about this over the last couple of weeks, in addition to the decades before that, is that, and, and, and all that's happened since I've been doing these biblical lectures is that my conviction in this has been strengthened, which is quite interesting, is that if you, if you do what it is that you're called upon to do, which is to lift your eyes up above the mundane, daily, selfish, impulsive issues that might beset you and attempt to enter into a contractual relationship with that which you might hold in the highest regard, whatever that might be, to aim high and, 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 to, and, to, and to make that important above all else in your life, that that fortifies you against the vicissitudes of existence like nothing else can. And I truly believe that that's the most practical advice that you, can possibly, that you could possibly receive. You know, I received... Uh, I was answering questions last night. I did this Q&A, which I do about once a month for, um, for the people who are supporting me on Patreon, which I also release on YouTube. And somebody asked, you know, they were struggling with their religious faith, and they asked what they could do about that. And I'd also been thinking about the, the difference between Nietzsche and Dostoevsky, which I'll discuss in a minute. And I, I was trying to answer this question with regards to religious faith, because he... he this person was shaky in his faith in life, let's say, which is a better way of thinking about it. And, and it seems to me that the way that you fortify your faith in being and in life, in your own existence, isn't to try to convince yourself of the existence of a transcendent power that you could believe in the same way that you believe in a set of empirical facts. I don't, I don't think that's the right approach. I think it's a weak approach, actually. Um, I don't... I don't think that the cognitive technology, that, I don't think that's the right cognitive technology for that set of problems, you know. That's more a, a technology that you'd use if you were trying to solve a scientific problem. It's more like, it's more something that needs to be embedded in action rather than in stateable belief. And the way that you fortify your faith in life is to assume the best, something like that, and then to act courageously in relationship to that. And, and that's, that's tantamount to expressing your faith in the highest possible good. It's tantamount to expressing your faith in God. And it's not a matter of stating, well, I believe in the existence of a transcendent de deity, because in some sense, who cares, who cares what you believe? I mean, you might and all that, but, but that's not the issue. That's not the issue. The issue, it seems to me, is how you act. And 